Trust me. Right. I've seen these little weird ass pictures and shit yeah. like that out there. I'm just sitting out there for no reason. Yo, you don't chair. see accident pictures with me like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. Chair, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, damn. For everybody wondering why 50 is on Diddy's neck like he is, this is why and abuse. Daphne Joy has posted to social media in regards to being in Rodney's lawsuit against Diddy and in regards to 50 Cent seeking sole custody of their son. 50 Cent just weighed in on the drama with his ex, Daphne Joy, being named in that lawsuit against Diddy. The lawsuit started with Lil Rod accusing Diddy of S.A., but now it's got this whole new twist claiming Diddy was paying women for, you know, extra services. And guess who's on the list? Young Miami from City Girls and, yep, Daphne Joy, who was once rumored to be Diddy's squeeze. And not only that, she is also 50's baby mama. It's just another episode in the ongoing drama between 50 Cent and Diddy. And you can bet 50 Cent won't hesitate to speak his mind and make the most of the situation whenever he can. Imagine finding out your baby mama is listed as a worker for Diddy in some lawsuit. That's gotta hit you like a ton of bricks. And then 50 Cent, he's been going at Diddy for a minute now, and it's starting to make sense. He probably found out the same way we did, and his reaction says it all. The lawsuit states, according to plaintiff Jones, defendant Sean Combs bragged about having several women on a monthly stipend. Karesha Romeka Brownlee, aka Young Miami, Jade Ramey, aka Jade, and Daphne Joy Cervantes Narvaez, aka Daphne Joy, who were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs's sex workers. And it looks like he wasted no time jumping into the mix when Daphne's name popped up in that lawsuit. His comeback was straight up witty and on point, mixing some humor into a pretty serious situation. Now, neither Diddy nor the ladies mentioned have said anything about it yet but 50 Cent couldn't resist stirring the pot. He hopped on social media and posted pics of Diddy puffing away on cigars with a caption that had everyone cracking up. He wrote, I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker, LOL. Yo, this shit is a movie. Classic 50, always keeping it real and making us laugh. And remember, this isn't the first time he's chimed in on rumors about Diddy and Joy. He made it clear before that he's only got beef with Diddy on business stuff, not his personal life. 50 Cent and Joy were together back in 2012 and their fling led to the birth of their son, Sire. But their relationship hit a rough patch in 2013, when they had a big fight. This led to 50 Cent getting charged with DV and vandalism. Even though he said he didn't do it, he ended up taking a deal. He pleaded no contest to vandalism and got put on probation. Plus, he had to do community service and pay Joy back for the stuff he messed up. In case you missed it, one of the standout moments between 50 Cent and Joy went down in 2022 when rumors started swirling that she was dating Diddy after the iHeartRadio Awards. Responding to the gossip, he posted a snap of their son, Sire Jackson, on Instagram with the caption, OS, that's your mommy over there with Puffy, LOL. Remember what I told you the other day, these B as be crazy, SMH, not one to let her ex off the hook. Joy fired back in the comments saying, please stop doing this to me. I never bother you and I'm an outstanding mother to our son. Can we please just focus on that, please? She later vented on her own Instagram about the frustration of always being portrayed in a negative light due to her past relationship with 50 Cent even though they split over a decade ago. She said, I value and cherish anyone I bring into my life, and when I finally show a glimpse of my happiness, I feel attacked for it. I'm so tired of defending my character, being prejudged, and constantly being villainized. I'm not doing anything wrong. I wish no ill to anyone. I just want to be happy. Thank you, and God bless. When 50 Cent posted about Joy being named in the lawsuit against Diddy, his fans were quick to react with admiration. They flooded the comments, applauding his bold and fearless approach. One fan joined, 50 gotta be the worst man to have as an op, he doesn't stop, highlighting 50's relentless trolling. Another compared him to the epitome of not caring, saying, if Idgaf was a person, it'd be 50 Cent. And if this is a response to his baby mama, Fifth is unmatched. Others thought he should take it down a notch, saying, if it's your son's mother, shouldn't you chill for your child's sake? And Daphne also posted on Instagram claiming the rumors are fake. She said, I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones's lawsuit. The claim that I am a sex worker is one 100% false and character assassination. I am retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. She even posted a video crying, saying she wouldn't wish this on any woman. But she didn't stop there, cause now it was 50 Cent's turn to catch some heat. Everything is a joke to you until our safety is compromised, which is happening now. You are wreaking real havoc, frenzy, and chaos onto people's lives. How would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs? For nothing, we moved to New York to give you the opportunity to be a father to your son, and you 
you saw him 10 times out of the two years that we lived one mile away from you. I am tired of upholding and protecting an image to our son that you have never even earned. Let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of and physically abusing me. You are no longer my oppressor and my God will handle you from this point on. You have permanently damaged the last hope I had for you as a father to preserve our family with these last and final false claims made against me. You have broken our hearts for the last and final time. Ouch. Those are some serious allegations. But some people are taking this with a grain of salt, saying that she only said that after she got caught up helping pity. And bro, you know she lying about that Diddy situation. She just mad and embarrassed. Speaking of Diddy. His homes in LA and Miami got raided by Homeland Security, and TMZ just got their hands on some wild footage from inside Diddy's LA crib. Picture this, federal agents tearing through Diddy's mansion like it's a tornado hit it. Drawers ripped open, stuff scattered everywhere, and safes busted wide open. And let's talk about the electronics. Computers smashed to bits, hard drives snatched up like it's a gold rush. It's chaos, fam. Now Diddy's breaking his silence, calling it a witch hunt, but let's be real, with all these civil suits flying around, it's no surprise they came knocking. Remember Cassie's lawsuit? That thing had people shook and Diddy had to cough up some serious cash to make it go away. But back to the footage, shout out to Neighborhood Talk for dropping that bomb on Instagram. They aren't holding back. You can see the whole mess for yourself. It's like something out of a movie. Diddy's been in the hot seat ever since Cassie dropped that lawsuit bomb. And I gotta say, anything shady that's gone down, I'm betting my last dollar he's tried to cover his tracks. Dude's probably got a playbook on how to vanish evidence quicker than you can say scandal. Now here's the kicker. People are are asking questions about this private jet that popped up in Antigua while Diddy was chilling in Miami. Like, who was on that jet and why was it there? But let's rewind a bit. Diddy was supposed to jet off for spring break with his kids, but they were at the LA crib while he was in Miami. And let's keep it real. Judging from that chaos in the raid footage, was that house ever clean to begin with? I mean, tossing stuff around like they did can make any place look like a mess. Now, Diddy's breaking his silence and his attorney's coming out swinging. They're saying the feds went overboard with their military-style raid. Yesterday, Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs's residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated, Combs's attorney Aaron Dyer said. Helicopters buzzing, agents swarming. It was a scene straight out of an action movie. But hold up, Diddy wasn't arrested despite all the chaos. He's playing nice with the authorities, but he's not taking any blame for this circus. And his attorney is making it clear that Diddy is innocent. He's Said, there has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Usually when the feds roll up on a spot, they're cuffing people left and right, no questions asked. But Diddy and his crew? Nah, they didn't get that treatment. Even with all the chaos, nobody got slapped with cuffs, including Christian, Justin, and the rest of the team. And let's be real, if they were about to lock Diddy down, you know they'd have snatched his passport right away. And you know 50 couldn't stay silent on this either. Either. He went on Instagram and wrote this. He wrote, Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. And in another post, he added, Oh, this shit is a movie. I told y'all, but no, you didn't listen. And fans agree. Someone commented, If the feds at your door, they already have the evidence. Believe that. And they might be right. But here's the kicker. Despite all the media buzz and speculation, nobody's been arrested and their travel plans are still wide open. Now Diddy's attorneys coming out swinging, saying it's all a witch hunt. They're doubling down, saying there's no solid evidence backing any of these claims. Remember Cassie's lawsuit, settled faster than you can blink and no admission of guilt. Diddy's lawyers playing that innocent until proven guilty card hard. But let's face it, there's a mountain of accusations against Diddy, spanning years. It's like his past is coming back to haunt him big time. The downfall of Diddy seems like it's unfolding right before our eyes. And in the court filings, it's straight up drama. They're talking about how Calms was getting his party on, doing lines in his dressing room. And get this, they couldn't find his stash, so they hit up Brandon, the white boy who's like his go-to for that stuff. But wait, it gets even crazier. They called up Young Miami and she's flying in on a private jet from Miami with the goods. In some wild news, Jones just dropped a bombshell in court. So get this, apparently they're suing Diddy, claiming he was all about this thing called pink cocaine or 2CB or 2C. Yeah, you heard that right, pink cocaine. It's like this mix of ecstasy and cocaine and Diddy was allegedly all about it. Here's the scoop. Jones is saying that Diddy was getting his stash from this dude named Brendan Paul, who they're calling his 
accused drug mule. But here's the kicker. When Brendan forgot to bring the goods, Diddy supposedly went to someone else for his fix. Jones is claiming that this other source was Brownlee. Can you believe it? So, in a bunch of pages added to Jones's filing, they're laying it all out. And check this out, they're saying Kalmas was all bragging about his lineup of ladies, paying them like clockwork. Karesha, Jade Ramey, and Daphne were all allegedly on his payroll, doing some shady stuff behind the scenes. And remember that dude Jonathan Adi spilled the tea a while back? Um, I had sex with Cass and Sean. Basically, he would, uh, he would masturbate and tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots of business because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the, on the phone and on the TV with speaking and stuff and I would be in the, I was like a sex slave, okay? For them, that's what I was. That's all, all right? Um, I caught herpes and I came back and I seen for the herpes and won. But they didn't did Mark Gerros and Ben Mercedes were his attorneys, okay? And Christopher Leon's here was my attorney. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. They gave it back to me accidentally, and it's possible, I, I threw everything out, it's possible I can produce a copy. Yeah, it's possible. I'm not sure. He straight up said that this whole hip hop scene is like a front for moving drugs. Well, uh, hidden in plain sight. It's hidden. Uh, I think I see what you're saying. Okay. okay, how do I know this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you know this? Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call himself. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boulet. The, the Boulet. Boulet. The Boulet is a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. It's the black private jets, private parties, it's all part of the game. And don't even get me started on how some people want to act like Diddy's kids are innocent angels. Justin's been through this lawsuit mess, and it ain't like he didn't know better. Misa called Diddy out for steering his son wrong, but Justin still ended up in cuffs. Don't cry foul when they're just as deep in the mess as their old man. Then there's Stevie J, rocking a biggie tee, divorcing Faith Evans, and suddenly he's all about praying for Diddy? Man, that's some hypocrisy right there. Dude's trending like crazy, along with Keisha's drama. This lawsuit is claiming Stevie J is caught up in some messy stuff, but he's denying it. But get this, in the court docs, it says that Stevie J was offered a Grammy win if he got down with some shady business involving Meek Mill, Usher, and yeah, Stevie J himself. The whole thing started with Lil Rod, aka Rodney Jones, who is coming at Diddy Hard, accusing him of running a whole racketeering setup. In the first lawsuit, he talked about some seriously messed up stuff going on, like Diddy allegedly inappropriately touching him, making him do things with S workers, and even spiking drinks at his crib including with younger girls. In this whopping 73-page lawsuit, Lil Rod didn't hold back. He's saying his time with Diddy was straight-up nightmare fuel. Apparently, Diddy had him recording non-stop, capturing all kinds of shady stuff going down. Like, we're talking illegal activities on tape. And it's not just Diddy in the hot seat, his son Justin, his chief of staff Christina, even big names like Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Grange and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium are all named in this lawsuit. Lil Rod ain't pulling punches either. He's claiming Diddy made him work in the bathroom while he showered. But it doesn't stop there. Lil Rod says Diddy had him feeling trapped, using his power in the industry, and even flashing guns to intimidate him. And get this, apparently, Diddy straight up admitted to being involved in that infamous 1999 shooting with Shine. And Lil Rod ain't just sitting around, he started a GoFundMe to cover his legal fees, claiming he's been shortchanged on his work with Diddy's latest album. This whole situation's got him feeling some type of way, especially with Grammy nods on the line. But Diddy's attorney is still trying to make him seem innocent. Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name-dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. Now, 50 Cent has repeatedly mocked Diddy for as long as we can remember. He's been straight-up clowning Diddy left and right ever since all this drama started with those lawsuits and federal raids on his cribs in LA and Miami. But here's the kicker. This beef between them? It's been cooking for decades. I'm talking diss tracks flying left, right, and center, competing vodka brands. Yeah, you heard me, vodka. These two ain't just throwing shade. They're launching whole businesses to one-up each other. And let's not forget the personal insults. They have been going at it non-stop. All right, so let's dive into the backstory of this whole 50 Cent and Diddy drama. It all kicks off with 50 Cent's track, The Bomb, where he drops some heavy lines hinting that Diddy might know more about Biggie Smalls' murder back in 97. Who shot Biggie Smalls? We don't get him. They gonna kill us all. 50 spits. And then 
and he straight up says, man, Puffy know who hit that N.A. But here's the twist. 50 Cent has never actually had any proof that Diddy was involved in Biggie's murder. Diddy's always denied any knowledge about it, so it's been this ongoing tension between them for years. Fast forward to 2014, and things heat up even more when they both get into the vodka game with their own brands. Diddy with Ciroc and 50 Cent with F and Vodka. And of course, they start throwing jabs at each other over whose vodka's better. 50 Cent's out here saying Diddy's Ciroc ain't even real vodka. It's made from grapes, not wheat like Effin. Then there's this whole thing about Diddy being fruity, according to 50 Cent. He claims Diddy says and does things that, well, come off a bit, uh, suspect, like inviting him to go shopping and all that. The nigga Puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get style. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga, we gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the f it just say? <laughs> <laughs> I got. This nigga just tell me he take me shopping. <laughs> and this is, shit, this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit, but probably the fruit pile. <laughs> Then there's the whole Daphne thing that we already talked about. Now, let's talk about Cassie. We all know about the lawsuit she dropped against Diddy, you know, claiming she'd been through a decade of essay and worse. Diddy denied it all, but they settled the whole thing real quick the next day. But here's the kicker. More people started coming forward with similar stories, and Diddy ended up stepping down from his revolt company. And 50 was there through the whole ride, mocking Diddy for any new lawsuit that was coming against him. He even claimed he's making a documentary all about it. Now, that's next level petty. He first dropped the bomb about this upcoming documentary back in December. And get this, he's producing it through his own company. He teased the title, Did He Do It?, and had everyone buzzing. Just recently, he shared what looks like a poster for the docu-series, and man, he's got us all hyped. With a message saying it's coming soon, 50 Cent's out here promising that this is gonna break records when this drops. 50 might be the most committed hater there is, and people respect him for that. You'd think he'd get bored of making fun of Diddy after so long, but nope, it just keeps getting better. And now that the whole baby mama thing was revealed, it's only made it worse for Diddy. We can feel a storm brewing, and who knows what T50 is going to drop next. One thing's for sure, it's not looking great for Diddy. Let us know what you think, and if you liked this video, make sure to watch the next one.